And now it is time to move forward again, to visit the holy well itself. As you enter, you will instantly become aware of the water in the central well basin, now gently bubbling up at the heart of the shrine. Walk to the back of the crypt, and stand with your back to the wall, beneath the central window light above your head. To your left is the viewing gallery, which was once level with and open to the road, and which once provided pilgrims coming down the hill from the town with their first view of the well. At present the gallery is not open to the public. Notice the impressive vaulting in the roof. Among the carvings in the roof are the coats of arms of various families who, it is suggested, offered financial support to the building of the shrine. In particular, look for the crown shield bearing three pomegranates, which is to your right, and which you have just walked under. This was the heraldic device of Catherine of Aragon before she became queen at the accession of Henry VIII in 1509. This, with the fine late perpendicular architecture of the shrine, enabled us to date the building to the first decade of the 16th century. The roof and the chapel above is supported upon the elegant pillars which surround the spring. These were once linked together with additional pillars and elaborate tracery, the whole forming a delicate screen all around the spring, separating the well basin from the surrounding ambulatory. This screen was smashed by Puritan vandals in the 17th century. Move to your left, and when you are ready, follow the ambulatory around the well to stand beside the wooden door beyond the viewing gallery. This was originally the main entrance to the well, approached from the adjoining highway down a steep flight of steps. Above and to the left of this door, notice the carved corbel showing one man carrying another on his back. This shows how sick pilgrims used to be helped through the waters of the well. Turn and for a moment step out through the open doorway to see the dragon and greyhound carved above the doorway. These are the heraldic emblems of the Tudor king Henry the Seventh, in whose reign the well shrine was erected. Now return inside and turn to the left to look across the crypt, where you have a fine view of the elegantly carved niche in which stood the much venerated medieval statue of St. Winifred, which was destroyed during the Civil War in the 17th century. The present fine statue of the saint was placed in the niche in 1888. It shows her as a royal abbess and martyr. The line around her neck recalls the tradition of the rejoining of her severed head to her body by Saint Bino. Now move forwards towards the statue, stopping halfway to turn to face the well itself. This consists of a large star-shaped basin within which the water rises before flowing into the deep narrow bath. The complicated star shape is otherwise found only in the windows around the apse of Henry VII's chapel in Westminster Abbey, which suggests that the well might have been designed by Robert Virtue, who began to build the Westminster Chapel for Henry VII in 1504. Now look up at the pendant boss above the spring, the base of which carries the royal arms of England and Wales, which again suggests royal patronage and reminds one of Henry VII's personal devotion to St. Winifred. An unprovenance tradition says that he was cured here at the well during his childhood, and a beautiful statue of St. Winifred still stands in his chapel at Westminster Abbey. The sides of the boss are carved with six scenes from the life of the saint, but weathering now prevents the detail from being seen clearly. The original design of the well provided for identical archways 
leading to curved flights of steps into and out of the narrow bath. And the arch to your right shows how they were both intended to look. However, it appears that during building, it was discovered that the stone lintels above the archways could not carry the weight. Thus, the left-hand arch was moved through 90 degrees and redesigned as a solid wall supporting the lintel, while on the right an extra and rather ugly pillar was hurriedly inserted as an emergency support. Only the curved flights of steps at either end of the bath now betray the original intention of the architect. Notice the graffiti scratched or carved into the walls and pillars. Many are dated and reveal the continuous presence of pilgrims at the well since the 16th century. They are a form of votive offering and each one represents a cure or at least one devoutly hoped and prayed for. The graffiti are important for our understanding of the history of the well, but we respectfully request our present day visitors not to damage the ancient fabric further by adding their own. However, please do sign the visitor's book in the entrance shop to record your visit here before you leave. One final item may be pointed out. Stand with your back to St. Winifred's statue between the statue and the doorway and look up at the roof. Here you will see a large boss depicting Winifred as an enthroned princess being crowned by angels. This 500 year old image of the saint serves as a last reminder that this beautiful place with its wonderful history is entirely due to the extraordinary and enduring personality of a 7th century Welsh woman called Winifred. Kings and queens, scholars, saints and sinners, and countless thousands of men and women whose names are lost to us have flocked here ceaselessly for more than 1300 years. Your presence here contributes to the sum total of the ongoing history of this place. And as your tour ends, we hope that your visit has enriched your life in some way. Pause for a last moment beside the well and listen to the words of an ancient prayer to St. Winifred, which has been said here for centuries. It sums up perfectly everything that St. Winifred's well has meant to so many for so long. O blessed Winifred, pure virgin and glorious martyr, so especially chosen, so divinely graced, and so wonderfully restored from death to life, hope of all that fly unto thee with full confidence and humility. We, though unworthy, yet thy devoted pilgrims make our petitions unto thee. Sanctuary of piety, look upon us with patient eyes, receive our prayers, accept our offerings, and present our supplications at the throne of mercy, that through thy powerful intercessions God may be pleased to bless our pilgrimage and to grant our requests and desires through Christ our Lord. Amen. May we at the shrine wish you a safe and happy journey home and may God go with you.